Declan Levity went to work on Sunday night, but he never came home. He was stabbed to death after he'd refused a customer service at the Darwin Airport Tavern. The 19-year-old man charged with his murder briefly fronted court yesterday where it was revealed he was already on bail for another alleged aggravated assault using a bladed weapon. Community leaders in the Territory say the government is failing in its most important duty, and that is to keep its citizens safe. So, this morning, Natasha Files has announced a review of bail laws and, quote, a number of immediate and future initiatives. This is what she had to say. The community, our safety is paramount. Enough is enough. This behaviour has to stop. We have seen nationally and in the Northern Territory increased carriage of edge weapons along with violent crime. This is not normal. We want to stop it before it takes hold. Before it takes hold? Before? I think we are well past that point. A 19-year-old boy is dead. And this is not an isolated incident. This same young man had been threatened with a screwdriver just weeks before. He was looking for another job because he deemed it too unsafe. Almost every day we're bringing you reports of another violent incident, another violent crime somewhere in the Northern Territory. Alice Springs has been a focus. And this is not a big city. We're talking about a town the size of about 25,000 people. And the violent crime that we're reporting day in, day out, it's over-representative. You'd see this level of crime in a big city like Sydney. We're talking about 5 million people. Natasha Files is still speaking live to the media in Darwin. Our reporter Matt Cunningham is there and he'll be joining us shortly. But let's go back to that media conference. A range of measures from an immediate response with uh, police and a high visibility policing response uh, to supporting these locations with crowd controllers to take that pressure off those frontline workers. Uh, it's about changing uh, potentially the layout of some of these venues. Uh, and then also giving uh, our workers the skills to do their job. I'm not sure if Alex wants to provide more comment. Uh, previously, with the support of the Northern Territory Government, we have rolled out de-escalation training, particularly for those late night crowd controllers, you know, the bouncers at, at, at the nightclubs. Um, yeah, we very much do think that this will be something that we can roll out through the retail network a bit more broadly where appropriate. And we know that there is strong interest from industry for, for that kind of de-escalation training. There's no one silver bullet to any of this. We're well aware of that. But if, if we can equip our staff better to verbally get themselves out of uh, difficult situations, that's a no-brainer. Is there anything else you would like to see in terms of what's been offered today? Uh, I think uh, given where we are, you know, 48 odd hours plus, I, th I think today's a, a reasonable first step. There'll be many in our industry that want it to go further. We'll want to see outcomes from the bail review. Uh, and yes, we are working closely with the government on, on Liquor Act changes as, as that progresses under a review that was already underway before this tragic outcome. Well, that's where we leave that media conference. That is uh, Hospitality NT, uh, obviously pretty shaken up, emotional earlier in that media conference about the death of this uh, young man. But... I mean, some of the announcements in this media conference today, sure, review bail laws, but put a time frame on it because this needs to happen sooner rather than later. There was also uh, an announcement of an audit of the environmental design of these buildings. OK, well, we'll see where that ends up. We'll get some more from Matt Cunningham in the next couple of moments or so.